السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد In the subject of tafsir ulum al-Quran we studied Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah that when it comes to understanding the Quran we have two branches one branch is called tafsir the second is called ta'wil one of them is tafsir This is one difference between them. One difference between tafsir and ta'wil is that tafsir is the outer, provides the outer meaning, whereas the ta'wil provides the inner meaning. But that's not the only difference. There is another difference. The other difference is that tafsir is when the verse when the verse arrived at a specific occasion to provide an answer to provide a solution to a specific occasion specific people specific city specific food specific drink okay ta'wil is the lesson we derive it from this incident and we apply it elsewhere okay the tafsir she she the ayah came to address a specific incident that is the tafsir of the ayah but the ta'wil is the lesson we can draw and we can apply it elsewhere that's the second difference between tafsir and ta'wil Okay. Therefore, ta'wil, why it is called ta'wil, my friends? Why they chose this term ta'wil? Ta'wil comes from the root ya'ul. Ya'ul. Ya'ul, of course, the root of it is awl, awl, not awl, ha, not awl, 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 sukun, sukun, awl, awl, it's written this, see, awl, we have shadda, this is awl, we don't mean this one, awl means first, awl, awl, it has sukun, awl, what does awl mean? It means the ultimate meaning of the ayah. The ultimate meaning. The ultimate direction the ayah is taking. The last direction, the ultimate direction. The ultimate meaning. In Arabic they say, huwa مآل الكلام في نهاية المطاف مآل الكلام مآل الكلام في نهاية المطاف The ending مآل means the ending of the meaning At the end at the end the ending of the meaning at the end in very simple English it means what are you trying to tell me what are you trying to tell me what God is it trying to tell me out of this verse I know it came for a specific to address specific situation but it has lessons 
Because God is for all times. The Quran is for all times, not only for that time. So it has, it has every ayah has a lesson, has applications. Not just one application, many applications. So what God is trying to tell me, this is the meaning of ta'weel. Okay? Now, some people, they, they get confused between tafsir and ta'weel. How is that? They read an ayah in the Quran. They go to the ta'wil of the ayah. They don't go through the tafsir. They think that the ta'wil is the tafsir. But the ta'wil is different from the tafsir. And we have many numerous examples of this in both the traditions, in the Sunni tradition and the Shia tradition. They go to a specific ayah. And they mention to you the ta'wil. They don't mention you the tafsir. They bypass the tafsir. Whereas they have to distinguish. They have to say, listen, this is the tafsir of it. And, of course, it has a ta'wil. But they don't. They take the ta'wil and they forget about the tafsir. And this is, this is not an honest way of doing things. We have to go to any ayah, we say, yes, the tafsir came on such and such and such to address this situation. However, the lessons are drawn. It can be applied to this situation and that situation. Two, what are the examples of this? Can you give me one example? I think we took one example back in March, March of this year. Of the tafsir and ta'wil? Uh -huh. of, of some people who come to the ta'wil thinking that the ta'wil is tafsir, but it's not. This is the ta'wil. This is not tafsir. You have to tell me the tafsir too, but they get confused. They get confused. They say tafsiru hadihil ayah, the tafsir of it is such and such, whereas it is not the, the tafsir. That is the ta'wil. You are not telling me that. Tell me the tafsir. What is it? There is a very popular verse in the Quran which is mentioned in two chapters. One in Surah An Nahl. Do you see the board has been enlarged? But it still is not enough. I have to keep raising. There is a verse in the Quran. It has been mentioned in two. In two <clears throat> chapters, in Surah An Nahl, which is chapter 16, verse 43, and Surah Al Anbiya, which is chapter 21, chapter 21, verse what? Verse <clears throat> 7. And that says, the ayah says, Fas'alu ahla dhikri in kuntum la ta'lamun. Fas'alu, therefore, ask the people of the reminder if you don't know. Fas'alu. Ahla dhikri. In kuntum la ta'lamun. Ahla dhikr. Fas'alu ahla dhikr. Some commentators within the Shi'i tradition, they come to this Ahlul Dhikr and they say, who are Ahlul Dhikr? Imams. They say they are the Imams. When they speak about the Tafsir, whereas the Tafsir is not the Imams. This is the Ta'wil. Yes, Ta'wil. We have from numerous Imams that we are Ahlul Dhikr. It's a reference to us. But that is Ta'wil. That is the inner meaning. That is one of the applications. Or it might be the main application, but not, not the original meaning. For the Prophet. Who is Ahlul Dhikr? We, if we read the Quran, 
the Quran sometimes referred to the Prophet as Innama Anta Mudakkir, Surah Al Ghashiya, chapter 88. In chapter 88, Allah says to the Prophet, You are a reminder. You are a reminder. Innama Anta Mudakkir, from Tathkir. Lasta alayhim bi musaytir. We don't want you to hold the gun on their head and say, Pray, pay homes, wear hijab, do salat, do, you know, uh, siyam. This is not your job. You are a reminder. You are not a controller. Lasta alayhim bi musaytir comes from saytara. Saytara controlling. You are not controlling people. We don't send you to be a controller. You are a reminder. So Ahlul Dhikr, the people who remind, or the reminders. So one of the applications is the Prophet and his family. They remind. They remind us of what God wants from us. They keep reminding us. Even an Imam in the Masjid, what is his job? He's a reminder. He's not inventing something, something from himself. He's not speaking on his own behalf. He reads the Quran, the Hadith, and he thinks this is what God wants us to say. So he keeps reminding the people. But is this the tafsir? No. Why? Because tafsir, we have to look at the verse. Where did it arrive? Why did it arrive? What circumstances? What people? What place? And when we look at that, the verse here, in Nahl, in Anbiya, we find that the tafsir is different. Yes, the application is the Prophet and the Imams. And the Imam says, Nahnu ahlu dhikr. We are the people of reminding. But the tafsir says, Ahlul dhikr, who are they? If you read the context, within the context, if you put this within the context, don't take it out. God is speaking to the Jews and the Christians in this verse. He says, if you don't believe that Muhammad is right, go to your own scholars and let them check out about the Prophet in their books. Because the continuation of this, in kuntum la ta'lamun, through clear proofs and through your own scriptures. As zubur means scriptures. So go to your own scholars and ask them whether Muhammad is right or wrong. They're going to tell you. So what is the tafsir of Ahlul Dhikr? The specific occasion that it came, it Ahlul came for. Kitab. Ahlul Kitab, the scholars of Ahlul Kitab. Scholars of Ahlul Kitab. What is the application of it, universal application? Any educator, any expert, any alim, and because the Prophet and the Imams are the top ulama, then, then the identification of this term is the Prophet and the Imams. But this is ta'wil or tafsir? This is ta'wil. Tafsir is the people of book, the scholars of the people of book, the rabbis, the priest of that time. Go to your books, go to your scholars and check it out. And see what your scripture says. Go to you because you don't know. In kuntum la ta'lamun about the Prophet, go to your scholars. They're going to tell you the truth about him. So this is one place where people get mixed. They get mixed. And therefore, in a debate, when you go to, to let's say, a Sunni scholar, tell him, Ahlul Bayt are Ahlul Dhik. He says, okay, okay, come here. Read the Quran. Open. The Quran is speaking about the people of book. They rejected the Prophet. How do you say, Ahlul, where is it? When you read it within context, he says, you are wrong. Look at the reference. The reference is to the people of book. He's right. But that is tafsir. That is tafsir. We should not get mixed up between tafsir and ta'wil. So we have to say the ta'wil of this ayah, one of its main applications, the cardinal application of it, are the Prophet and the Imams. But the tafsir is the people of book. This is one situation. Where is the second situation? Where is it? 
Sorry, say it's so yes. that we of the prophet and the imams for this verse, it's pretty much means I mean, ask them anything if you don't know. Yeah. Fasalu yeah. ahlad dhikr. When you don't know about religion, about anything in this life, then go to the Prophet and the Imams because their knowledge is, is what? Is from God. They can inform you about anything, basically about anything. Okay? So that is one example. The second example, it is again the mixation when people mix between tafsir and ta'wil. They mention the ta'wil thinking that this is tafsir, but it's not. this is not tafsir, my friend. This is ta'wil. Don't get mixed between them. Don't get mixed up between them. Where is it? It is in Surah Al-Mulk, 6730. Surah Al-Mulk, 6730. 67, Al-Mulk. 67, 6730, yes. Qul, in Asbaha say to your community, Qul, in Asbaha ma'ukum gawran. The continuation of it, فَمَنْ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِمَاءٍ مَعِينٍ What does it mean? Say, Ya Rasulullah, to your community, have you considered, have you considered where your water to vanish into the ground? غَوْرَ غَوْر غَوْر This is comes, غَوْرَ comes from the root غَوْر Have you heard in the news غَوْر الْأُرْدُن? Ali, Dr. Ali, غور الأردن. When they speak about weather on weather channels in, in Syria, in Lebanon, in, in Jordan, they say غور الأردن. غور الأردن is the place where it is sunk down. This is غور الأردن. Why they call it غور الأردن? What happened there? Not the flood. Time. Exactly. Thousands of years ago, biblical story and Quranic story that God, these were five villages, Sodom and Gomorrah and other villages, five, where they were toppled upside down. They were made upside down. So the land is what? Not excavated. No, the land is lower than the sea level, below sea level. This is Ghawr. It's called Ghawr. It vanished. These cities vanished. The, the, the land swallowed them. Ghawr. So God says, consider if your water in Asbaha ma'ukum, your water. Ma is water. Ma'ukum, your water. Ghawra vanishes into the ground. فَمَنْ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِمَاءٍ مَعِينٍ Who's going to bring you water to drink? Fresh water to drink. Flowing water. Who's going to bring you? Many of the Shia commentators, Mufassirin, exegists, they say ma'ukum means imamukum. Why? Because ma is considered, translated as what? Imam. Why it is considered water as a metaphor for imam? Exactly. The same thing that the water, we need it. I need this water to sustain myself. If I don't drink, I can't speak. I can't move. So, same thing, knowledge. To sustain my brain, to sustain my life, to see my way, to find my way. I need ilm. So, here... Here, ma'ukum gawra, then it is a reference to your imam. They say, the ayah says, have you considered if your imam is absent, what would you do without having an imam? You're going to live in disarray. You're going to live in confusion. 
It is right. But is this the tafsir or the ta'wil? This is ta'wil, my friends. This is not tafsir. This is ta'wil. This is the inner meaning. This is one of the applications or the main application. I agree with you. The main application of the verse. But the tafsir is literal. Tafsir, Allah is telling his miracles. He's enumerating his favors on the people. He says, I'm giving you food. I'm giving you shelter. I'm giving you water. Okay. Imagine if the water sinks, sinks down and you dig deep and there is no water and you are in the desert. You stay with what? no water. Who's going to provide you with drinking water? That is the tafsir. That is the tafsir. But the ta'wil, yes, the ta'wil, ma'ukum means imamukum. That is another example of how some people, they mix between, between the ta'wil and the tafsir. <clears throat> okay. Of course, Imam al-Sadiq has a hadith that the Imam is considered the water, flowing water, who provides you with knowledge, who provides you with guidance. But this is ta'wil. This is not the tafsir. The tafsir, the surface meaning of it, the clear meaning of it, is God speaking about water itself, physical water. That if I take this away from you, who's going to provide you with water? The third one. Third one, which also some people, they mix between tafsir and ta'wil is is in 28.5 Surah Al-Qasas 28.5 Surah Al-Qasas this is very popular many of us probably we memorize this وَنُرِيدُ أَنْ نَمُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا we desire أن نمن على الذين استضعفوا في الأرض ونجعلهم أئمة ونجعلهم الوارثين. We desire to be gracious to those who have been oppressed. This is why 40 years ago in Iran they developed this اصطلاح. This, you know, saying مستضعفين. From that day until now. It's taken from this verse. From this verse. If you want to know the root of it, this one. Rahmatullah on this verse. <laughs> this made us mustadhafin until the day of judgment. Mustadhaf and mustakbir. This is. So someone asked me, someone one day, he was angry, you know, at, at this. He said, where does this come from? Who, who called us mustadhaf? I said, it's in the Quran. Imam Khomeini didn't bring it from his pocket. It's in the Quran. He took it, extracted that from the Quran. So, we, we desire to be gracious to those who have been oppressed in the land. In the land. We make them imams and we make them the heirs. The heirs of the earth. They're going to succeed. They're going to succeed. And they're going to be leaders, alhamdulillah, Rabbil And we became leaders, mashallah. And we are doing, doing very well, alhamdulillah. <laughs> so, this one, some people, they say that this is, Allah is speaking about the ta'wil. They use the ta'wil of it, ta'wil. So they say the ta'wil of oppressed, Who are the Mustadaf or Mustadaf? Who is the Mustadaf? Imams. Huh? Imams, their followers, Shia community, Iranian people, Iraqis, <laughs> Yemenis. But is this the is this the tafsir? In fact, the tafsir it's the Israelis. Exactly the opposite. <laughs> Exactly the opposite. Because read it within the context. You have to read this, this Surah Al-Qasas. Most of it speaks about Musa. Most of it speaks about the children of Israel. 
the Israelites. And then God says, it's very clear when you read it. And we will show the result to Pharaoh, to Haman, his minister Haman. Why? Because they were oppressing the children of Israel. So in this context, in the tafsir, the tafsir, tafsir of this are the children of Israel, the Israeli, Israelites. Because they were oppressed by the Copts by the Egyptians, by Pharaoh, by Haman. That is the tafsir. But from this tafsir, we can extract what? Ta'wil, universal meaning, applies to every situation. Wherever, wherever there is oppressed people, then we can take this verse, we can use it. Whether they are in China, whether they are in Africa, whether they are in, 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 in North America, in South America, then, if they are oppressed, then God says, we promise them victory. So the original tafsir of Mustad'af, who are they? The Israelis. But the universal application of it, it could be the Yemenis today. It could be the Bahrainis. It could be the African Americans. It could be those, the caravan that is coming now to the border from Honduras, from Guatemala, from Mexico. Those are any people who their rights have been usurped. You know, they live under dictatorship, poverty, sickness, tyranny, whatever. So this is, it's very amazing. In the Quran, if you follow the Quran, the parables of the Quran, wherever God speaks about tyranny, he uses the, the, the examples of Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Wherever he uses the example of, op uh, of, of being oppressed, Mustad'af, he uses the, the, the name of Musa alayhi salam. In the Quran, always, always, always this is the story. Whenever God wants to condemn the oppressors and the dictators, he uses the name of Pharaoh. To the extent that some people think Pharaoh is a it became a nickname for every dictator. They say, this is Fir'aun. But Fir'aun was a person, a reality. He was a person. It applies to one person. The tafsir of it is it's one person. The ta'wil, yes, you can use Like today, today we can say about whoever is corrupt, especially in the Arab country, this is Saddam. See, he's Saddam. <laughs> Saddam is dead, but now... <laughs> he is being used as an example for every dictator, every tyrant. So that is, in fact, the mustad'af, the tafsir is different than ta'wil. The tafsir, the original meaning, the original occasion were the Israelites. But now the universal application, it's every, every oppressed, especially Muhammad wa al-Muhammad, the believers. Imam al-Mahdi is one of them. Okay. Now, and therefore there is a hadith in this regard of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Of Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, هم آل محمد صلوات الله وسلامه عليهم. مستضعف آل آل محمد. The hadith of Amir al-Mu'mineen. But this is ta'wil, this is not tafsir. It's ta'wil. The tafsir are the Israelites. And then Imam al Sajjad gives this parable example. He says, Walladhi ba'atha Muhammadan bil haqqi bashiran wa nadiran. Inna al abrara minna ahl al bayt wa shi'atahum bimanzilati Musa wa shi'atah. The virtuous among us, the family of the Prophet, and their Shia, their supporters, are like Moses and his supporters. وَإِنَّ عَدُوَّنَا Our enemies indeed and their supporters بِمَنْزِلَةِ فِرْعَوْنَ وَأَشْيَاعَهِ And our enemies, even if they are Bani Umayyah, Bani Al-Abbas, but they are like, like uh, Pharaoh and his supporters. So look how Pharaoh and Musa both, they became example for, Musa became example for every oppressed, 
and Pharaoh became an example and a name or a nickname or a character for every oppressor, every oppressor. And therefore, this is not tafsir. This is what, my friends? When we study the Quran, we have to be very careful not, not to mix up between what is tafsir and what is ta'wil. We state that this is tafsir, but then the ta'wil is different. And of course, ta'wil is mentioned in the Quran. Ta'wil is something legitimate. We believe every verse has two versions. One tafsir and the second is ta'wil. Because Quran is a universal book. If the Quran had only tafsir, no ta'wil, it would have been expired. When the Prophet dies, his book dies with him. Because it came for 23 years. Historical. Historical. We put it in the archive. But because the Quran is universal for every time, for every day, for every occasion, for every town, for every civilization, then it has to have ta'wil. We extract from that verse a lesson to other situations. Okay. Another verse, my friends, that also came to address the situation of Bani Israel, but that is the tafsir part of it. The ta'wil of it is universal and it applies to Al Muhammad also. Which one is that? That is Surah An Nur 2455. An Nur 2455. Again, it applies. The tafsir of it speaks about Bani Israel and how God is going to destroy them and replace, replace Pharaoh with people who are from Bani Israel, who are going to be the new vicegerents of God on earth. He's going to make them the vicegerent on earth. As he did, as he used communities before them as his own vicegerents. He will establish the religion for them. What does it mean he will establish the religion for them? It's a reference to what? Yumakkin, he will enable you. To practice your religion freely. Freedom of, freedom of religion. This is about freedom of religion. Freedom of practice. That you can practice without fear. Without intimidation. Okay? He will exchange them after the state of fear that they suffer, the state of security that they're going to enjoy. Again, this ayah speaks about previous communities, the tafsir of it. But the ta'wil, the ta'wil nazalat fil qa'imi wa ashabih. Imam al-Sadiq says, this verse, the ta'wil of it, speaks about Imam al-Mahdi and his community, his ashab, his companions. That is the ta'wil, not the tafsir. Tafsir, God says, many communities before you who were oppressed, we decided to change their oppression. We remove the oppression from them. We provide them with peace, with security, with the freedom of religion, with freedom of Freedom of work, freedom of existence. Anyone who's righteous. It applies to any community that is righteous. Why? Because it says, الصالحات. They have faith and they do good. الصالحات. If they live in a state of fear today, if they are being oppressed, marginalized, this is not going to continue. And I think even it applies to America today, Muslims in America. If they have faith and do righteous, if God promises, they have real faith and good practice, then he was exchange them. One day, now Alhamdulillah, we have two women. Two women, and then we had one, two before, but the one, one of them is gone. He became the attorney general of Minnesota. 
So now Keith Ellison vacated his seat. He became the, the Attorney General. He won. And uh, he has a very interesting story. Did you follow his story? Wow. He almost lost because he had a girlfriend, Iranian girlfriend, who lived with him for so many years, and she was destroying him during these last elections. She claimed that he used uh, <clears throat> domestic violence against her. And she, one day he pulls her from her legs out of bed. And she, first she said, I recorded the incident on my whatever iPhone. But then she did not provide the, the, the evidence. So he narrowly missed, though his state is democratic, but he narrowly missed. But alhamdulillah, he won. He won. Because his first wife, ex-wife, African-American, she came to his aid. She said, he was my husband, and I am divorced now. I am his strange wife, but he's a man of honesty and integrity. He doesn't do these bad things. He never uses domestic violence. Subhanallah. An ex-wife comes to your aid. This is something good. This is something good. So I think it helped him a little bit. So, inshallah, slowly, slowly, you know, Sharia is moving. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, then we take another one. And then, let's see how much time we have. Yeah, we take another one. Do you have something in your mind? about mixing between tafsir and ta'wil. Do you have? Abasa wa tawalla. Not a frowning, not the incident of frowning, but verse 24, <laughs> Which says, فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِهِ إِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِهِ أَنَّا صَبَبْنَا الْمَاءَ صَبًا فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ So let man look into his food. طعام طعامه, his food. So it is ta'am. Ta'am. So what is the meaning of ta'am here? Tafsir or ta'wil? Tafsir. Meaning. Not application. Meaning. Sorry, so what is the context of the verse? God, again, see, these are Meccan verses. Abasa is... And... In mostly in Meccan verses, God speaks to whom? Who, who his audience is in Mecca? Quraysh. The non-believers. In Medina, most of them are believers. But in Mecca, believers were four, five, six. So mostly non-believers. So usually when you speak to non-believers, if you go to a church here, church, non-Muslims, do you tell them about the details of Islam? How do you do wudu? How do you do ghusl al Or do you tell them about monotheism, the existence of God? Which one? Definitely monotheism. Why our God is invisible, let's say. Why we can't see him. Why we don't have picture. You don't speak about wudu here. Who does wudu? Nobody cares about what wudu is. In Mecca, Allah was speaking to Quraysh mostly not about details of religion because nobody prayed, nobody was fasting. He was speaking about why he is important and how they can discover him. He would bring their attention to ways that they discover him and they believe that he does exist. One of them is this sentence. 
فلينظر الإنسان إلى طعامه أنا صببنا الماء صبا ثم شققنا الأرض شقة Look into your food How your food is developed How do you grow food Who does that for you Is this by accident Is this by accident you come into a farm And nobody touch this land And it, it grows food by itself Or there was a farmer There was a fertile land There was water Someone watering Someone taking care Someone putting the, sowing the seeds. So God was trying, you know, uh, to stimulate their, their brains, their minds. So he speaks about food. He says, let's man look into his food. How does his food, where does his food come from? The food that you eat today, where does it come from? So this is the tafsir. Food here means ta'am. That goes into your stomach. Look into your food. Be careful of what you eat. Try to eat healthy. This is another meaning of it. Try to eat healthy. The food, if the food does not have a nutrition value, then don't eat it. Or if it has bad nutrition, don't eat it. If it is junk food, don't eat it. Eat what is organic, what is beneficial. So this is what the tafsir of it. What is the ta'wil? What is the ta'wil of ta'am? Tafsir, this is tafsir. It's food. Physical food that we eat. What is the ta'wil? Ahsant. Imam al-Sadiq says, فَلْيَنْظُرْ إِلَى الْعِلْمِهِ الَّذِي يَأْخُذُهُ عَمَّنْ يَأْخُذُهُ Imam al-Sadiq says, فَلْيَنْظُرْ فَلْيَنْظُرْ إِلَى عِلْمِهِ الَّذِي يَأْخُذُهُ عَمَّنْ يَأْخُذُهُ Let him look into his ilm, knowledge. That he receives from where? Amman means from where he receives. From where he receives? Yes. Look into the knowledge. Which school you are going to? Who is your teacher? Who is your sheikh? Who is your mentor? Who is your book? Who is your imam? You have to look into that. This is a responsibility. Not anyone who says, I'm an imam, I'm a sheikh, I'm a teacher. You just join and listen and, and give your brain to him. Surrender your brain, your intellectual power to him. Your aql, give it to him. This is unacceptable. Unacceptable. There are many scholars that I disagree with them. They are within the Shia traditions. I don't listen to them. I don't listen to them. His turban is five times bigger than my turban. His beard is ten times longer. I don't listen to that guy. I don't listen. Not out of prejudice. He has done nothing personal to me. No. But he's not interpreting religion as it should be. I'll give you an example of two extremes. One extreme of those who do ghulu, ghulu. You know, they sanctify the imams, they bring them closer to God. This is ghulu. Imams are imams, we love them, we die for them. But there is someone above them called God. They are the servants of, the slaves of God, not servants, slaves. Muhammad is the, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu. He is a slave of God. So this guy was saying that if you go to Imam Hussein, you know, it's not only good to hit yourself with your hand on your head, on your face, on a, as, as a gesture of sadness for Imam Hussein. You can do that with your shoes too. Latom, latom, sinazani. Now we know the people do latom with their hands. He said, do latam with your na'al, with your slipper. What sort of sheikh is this? What sort of a brain he has in his, in his, does he have a brain? Imam Hussein is a symbol of dignity, respect, honor. He 
he wants me to hit myself with my with my shoes does he do that or <laughs> I think this is a counterfeit. I told the friend, this is not Sheikh, believe me. This is someone who, who purchased some, you know, Qimash. He did the, the, the Amama, you know, makeshift Amama. And then he's giving fatwa to many, many, some of them are naive who believe in him. This is Nike or something. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> really? So, some of them are. So this is on one extreme. On the other extreme, we have. That some people say, walking to the shrine of Imam Hussein is invalid, batal, you are wasting your time, you, are, you should not even walk even 10 steps. That's another extreme. Why? Imam Hussein is a symbol of <laughs> heroism. He's an inspiration. So what's wrong if I, nowadays I can go to, to burial site of this president and that president and this you know, a uh, soldier who killed, uh, died in this battle and that, and we can, we, we can lay a wreath, you know, uh, we can put flowers, we can, today, today is the veteran, veteran whatever, Veterans Day. Why do we have, why, why our kids didn't go to school? Why? Because there were some people who gave their life for this country. We have to appreciate them. So why it's wrong even if I walk 10 steps, you know? This is also extremism. Imam Hussein is not worth to, to walk in, you know, 10 kilometers, even 50 kilometers for his shrine. This is a spiritual journey. Otherwise, even Sa'i, Safa, and Marwa, it's, 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 it's wrong. Why do I walk? Between what? There is no Hajar there, no, there is no Ismail. The story is 5,000 years ago. Why I'm wasting my time? But there is a lesson. Allah said there is a lesson. Inna Safa wal Marwata min Allah. I want you to go to there. I want you to reflect, to remember the story. And then apply it to your own life. So we have both extremes. See, in one country, in one city, they live probably in, in, in the same neighborhood. One of them is this extreme, the other is that extreme. Imam says, look into who is your source of knowledge. Don't give yourself to anyone. فَلْيَنظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامَ Examine your mentor. Test your mentor. Don't just go to any school, school and enroll because they teach this lesson. Don't, do, don't, don't be naive. People should not be naive. Here in this community, I, I speak vaguely. I don't want to elaborate. They go to a place. That place they don't pray. They have a music, you know, the drum, a music, and they do dhikr. And they start dancing. And someone was saying, this is spiritually uplifting, dancing. <clears throat> I said, but where is the dancing? Did the Prophet do this? Did the, any of the Imams? Show me. Show me. Show me hadith that we can do this. Yes, we have dhikrullah. We can do dhikr with your hand. You can do silently. You can do in a group. But the way, the tradition that they created, and they call it sacred, and they are replacing it with the prayers. Do you know that? It's a substitute for no more prayers. You do this because this is uplifting. Of course, I mean, even if you go to a nightclub, it's really uplifting. Go there and you start dancing. You get some energy <laughs> and you start dancing. Is th does that mean this is wajib, mandate, or this is halal? Not anything which is even some people they drink, it's uplifting for them. They do drugs, uplifting for them. Even when they shoot and kill, it's uplifting. Doesn't mean anything which is uplifting. We have to, not to be naive, we have to see, does this have root in Islam? Or this is bid'ah, I create this. We cannot. Sometimes you do your prayers and say, yes, I go to this dhikr, no problem. Go, as a, something extra. But as a replacement, a substitute for five daily prayers, cannot be accepted. Many people are naive, believe me. They subscribe to a book. Do you know this guy in, in Istanbul who was arrested, Yahya Harun? Very famous. I didn't know about him. Then my son said, Daddy, this guy, you know, he's superstar, this is. Isn't he the guy with the Masonic or something? Whatever, in, in Istanbul, he created, he has a mansion. 
that overlooks the prosperous, the sea. <clears throat> and he brings the most beautiful girls. And they go through plastic surgery, plastic surgery, breast augmentation. And th the way they are dressed, as if they are in a nightclub. Nightgown, they really, go check it out, it's on the, on the YouTube. And then he sits in front of camera, surrounded by 50, 60 of those beautiful girls, and he speaks about God, <laughs> about Anbiya, about love, believe me. And then after that, wallah, after that the music starts, you know, playing, and he dances with those, wow. dances with them. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, he was arrested, you know, some time ago. What, what did they arrest him for? Okay. For, for. This? Uh, Deviation, of uh, course. Uh, oh, yeah, Islam. He's rich. He has satellite TV. He broadcasts wow. to so many countries. He has so many followers. Nobody's behind him, yani, the, the Definitely, yani. definitely yeah. there, is, there are people yeah. behind him. Definitely there is an establishment behind him. So really kind of but some people say, yeah, but he's speaking about love. Look at the nice way he speaks. Not wow. anyone who speaks nicely, it means he's right. You're kind of associating <laughs> that being okay, yani. Classical condition of to associate this wearing with uh, these type of clothes with uh, Muslim stuff. He says else. God, his argument is that God <coughs> created women. This is what one of God's wonders in life. So why we should cover them? We shouldn't cover her body. Her body is a gift from God. We should look at it, you know, appreciate it, enjoy it. This is what he says. And many people believe in him. They say, yeah, he's right. That's if God didn't want us, he, should have, he shouldn't have created women. He, sh he could have created one sex. So why God created women beautiful? He wants me to, to, to enjoy them. And then he uses Quran to support his art. Say who, who forbade God's zina, God's attraction, you know. We have to look at this, we have to enjoy it. And millions of people, they, they buy him, they, they, they believe in him, they follow him. So this is فَلْيَنظُرُ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِهِ إِلَىٰ عِلْمِهِ الَّذِي يَأْخُذُهُ مِنْ أَيْنَ يَأْخُذُهُ Imam al-Sadiq says, look it into your mouth, don't waste your time. Don't waste your life going into a direction, reading a book that the author of the book, he has an agenda. Maybe he's sweet, even if when he lectures, even when he goods, gives lessons. He's misleading. I mean, it's very important this day, this, you know, uh, especially with all the information and in social media and all the bombardment. Confusing. For many people, they are confusing. Yeah. You know? I know some scholars, in the beginning, they were right. They spoke right. As they became more famous, gurur started to creep in. Gurur, gurur. You know? Some type of arrogance, pride. That Look at, I have millions of people following me. Millions of subscribers, they, they watch my YouTubes, they follow my tweets. I must have been some, someone important. People are listening to me. And then he starts, you know, after being good in the beginning, he starts to deviate. He starts to bring innovations, bid'ah, which has no basis. He makes things halal, which is haram, and he makes things that are halal, haram. So the, the beginning of his journey, he was nice. He was good, he was speaking good, but then gurur. But that's a good test of his iman. Exactly, not only his iman, the people who follow him. Yeah. Doesn't mean if that person was right in the beginning, he's going to continue right till the day of his death, no. God has given me brain. One day a person came to Imam Ali. He said, yeah Imam Ali, people who are fighting us in the battle of Jamal, <coughs> Those are pious people. They were during the time of the Prophet with him, praying with him. How can we fight them? Imam Ali said to him, you are confused. Ya hada innaka lamalbusun alik. You are confused. Don't look at fulan and fulan and you think they will be right always. Even when they drink alcohol, you say, yeah, they were with the Prophet. So if he drinks alcohol, it means alcohol is good. If he murders, it means murder is good. If he steals, just because he was with the Prophet. No, look at right and wrong, and then apply people to right and wrong. Don't apply right and wrong to people. 
apply people to right and wrong, to falsehood and truth. Are you with me? This is the difference. We have to know what is right, what is wrong, what is truth, what is falsehood, falsehood, and then we apply people to them to find whether those people are right or wrong. Not we look at two people, Sanam, idols, and then we apply truth and falsehood to them. This is not right. One day a person is good, but who says, who, who's going to guarantee that tomorrow he's going to remain good? Today he's good, maybe tomorrow he's not good, or today he's bad, tomorrow he becomes good. This is the application. So, الإنسان, so the tafsir of it is food, the actual food. Look into the food, physical food that you eat. But the ta'wil of it, look into the knowledge from whom you receive this knowledge. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ahli baytah al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa